Welcome to the channel folks. This is my best VR settings guide for the Reverb G2 in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Now that we've got Sim Update 8 out of the way, we can absolutely get those settings dialed in. Now, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, now is your chance to really support my content. It's very rare I mention this, but I must admit, it's pretty hard work keeping the channel like this running. So if some of you can subscribe to me, I would really appreciate it, particularly as 80% of my viewers are not subscribed. All it takes is a quick button press and that will ensure that videos will keep coming well into the future. Anyway, let's get cracking and onto those settings. I'm gonna mention two different setups, particularly for high-end users with 3080 and 3090 cards and also mention 1080 Ti users out there because I do run two different PCs and I find this works best for me. So let's start with the render scale. I'm not going to mention every single slider here but I will show you my settings. This is what I run with my full fat 10900K 3090 machine. If you've got a similar uh, sort of PC um, feel free to copy them settings and let's see how you get on. But I must admit the render scaling of course that's one of the heavy hitters for VR um, and I know it's hard folks but don't be too afraid to turn those settings down. I think pretty much most of the people that have problems with frame rate, well, it's pretty simple. You've got your settings too high. This is VR after all. And if you are running a high resolution headset like the HP Reaver G2, you're gonna suffer folks, even with a high end GPU. Right, so the render scale, as I say, 100%. And a few things I'm gonna mention here, like off screen terrain pre-caching, that does have a bit of an effect on performance, but I do think it, it's a big thing for VR. I would recommend, if you've got the power and the grunt, to keep that to ultra. Terrain level of detail, even though you can go to the dizzying heights of 400, I would not recommend it. Stick to 150, particularly with the Reva G2, you're not gonna notice it that far anyway in the distance. All these buildings are just gonna be drawn and you're not gonna see them, so it's pointless and it does have quite an impact on performance. Uh, volumetric clouds is one I want to mention. The difference between high and ultra is actually not that huge in terms of the visual fidelity, but you will induce a bit of stuttering particularly if you like motion reprojection, as I've noticed. Uh, also things like um, basically your texture resolution. If you've got the grunt, if you've got the VRAM, set that to ultra. Otherwise, I would highly recommend that you stick that on high. Uh, pretty much everything else like ambient occlusion, I actually turn that off. It's still a heavy hitter in the sim. Um, and to be honest, really, it is, you know, it's a very nice feature, but not something I'm, I truly miss in VR, uh, so I have that off. QMAP Reflections, that's another one that uh, is actually very good for 30 series cars if you've got the grunt. Um, however, I do have that on medium. Light shafts, that's just, I just love the eye candy of light shafts, I think it's beautiful, uh, although it's still a heavy hitter. Now, I wanna also mention folks, actually, that these settings, every single system is different. These are just guidelines to give you a bit of a starting point because um, it's not gonna be exactly right for your system. None of it is. Even if you maybe have the same specs as me, there will be certain things that may affect the performance. Glass cockpit refresh rate, I have that on high because I do love my IFR flights in the aero. In terms of terrain shadows and contact shadows, I still find that's an area of the sim that's not very optimized. I have that on low personally. Right, now, what do I change my 1080 Ti machine? I have the render scale set down to 75. That is a big hitter for the 1080 Ti, it just cannot cope with it. I also have volumetric clouds set to medium. Um, I have grass and bushes set to off. Uh, trees, I keep that to medium actually, uh, but I have buildings low, because buildings have more of an impact than trees for some reason, just does on my system. Um, off screen terrain caching, I have that set to medium. Terrain level detail, I have that set to 90. And object level detail, again, set to 90. Other things um, I've got here is my uh, texture resolution. Well, I've still got 20, uh, sorry, 20, <laughs> 12 gigs of VRAM and the 1080 Ti machine, uh, you know, that seems to cope with that fairly well. But I do take the filter in the um, AF filtering back to eight times because of the lower generation of the GPU. Other things I change is the ray march reflections that is off, light shafts are also off, bloom is off, um, and I think, yeah, that's about it, folks. I have everything else on pretty much high. 
However, I think water waves would be something that I would turn down as well, but that's up to you guys. When it comes to traffic, I have that pretty much set the same on both systems, which is pretty damn low to be honest. I don't use AI traffic, that is a real FPS killer. And I know, you know, uh, with live traffic, you get the odd rogue aircraft, but to be honest, I think it's much better on frame rate my uh, sort of ships and ferries i have that 100 percent because you know you don't see too many of them uh, road vehicles i have that set to 30 percent and leisure boats again set to 30 percent in terms of my nvidia settings all i change now very simple folks is i have texture quality set to performance i now set my power management mode to prefer maximum performance i used to have that set to normal but the stuttering that i used to have with the old nvidia driver has now gone so i'm totally uh, sort of cranking up those settings there and the virtual reality pre-rendered frames are set to two that is it and the driver i recommend at the times recording is 511.79 which was released on the 14th of february um, and yeah, absolutely rocks that driver. I'll certainly let you know if that changes. Now, Windows Mixed Reality settings, that's really important, folks, um, particularly because unless you are a VR YouTuber and you know you want to use a mirror, I'd highly recommend making sure that the mirror is disabled. You can do that by pressing the pause button uh, and that way there's less going on. Also, within your settings, which if you click those little dots on the left hand side, the bottom left of your Windows Virtuality portal, you'll see on the left hand side, you'll have headset display. Recommend uh, to adjust that so it's 70, 720p and the just level of detail of the quality of the Mixed Reality home environment to low. However, I would definitely recommend if you want to get the best out of your Revo G2 for your headset settings, it is best visual clarity or visual quality, sorry, and your resolution is 4320 by 2160. In other words, best quality at 90 hertz. I would not recommend 60 hertz because for me personally, it's very stroby, doesn't really work. And this footage you're seeing right now, folks, is a result of all of these little settings. Absolute smooth performance. I do think that Sim Update 8 whatever's happened maybe because there's less bugs that the uh, computer is trying to work out uh, under the hood it just feels more refined now absolutely um, and it just feels so good with motion reprojection on talking of that here are my openxr development tool settings you can see here i use latest preview runtime on i've got a custom render scale set to 100 and my motion reprojection is either automatic if I'm doing flights like this, which you're seeing right now, or if I'm doing a long haul flight and I, you know, I want a bit more clarity and I'm not so bothered about the ground being so smooth, I will actually turn that off. So I you know, prefer both ways of flying depending on what I'm doing because motion reprojection, when it works, is absolutely beautifully butter smooth, okay? It really is. Now in terms of my 1080 Ti card, um, I actually knock my render scale down to 70% uh, like I used to back in the old days to so have 70% uh, OpenXR and then 75% in the sim. This works really well with the OpenXR toolkit which we're going to talk about next. By the way, all these apps that I'm talking about will be linked in the description below so don't worry, okay? Because <laughs> there's a lot more to it than there used to be. Now the OpenXR Toolkit, if you haven't heard of it before, it's a game-changing app. I'll link my sort of first look video in the description below. And it really does make a huge difference to performance, but also the visual clarity of the Revo G2. You can change the wheel scale, everything. It's going to get better and better. We're going to get foveated rendering support any day now. And rest assured, I'll be testing that out and giving you my first sort of look. Well, not just a first look, actually. I'll be giving you my recommended settings very soon. Now at the moment, I'm running 90% NIS scalar and 40% sharpening. I'd recommend trying that. Any more than that, I think you'd you know, get a few shimmering issues. I do the same with my 1080 Ti card as well. Now, if you've got an AMD system, I'd recommend trying FSR with those same settings. But again, these are just guidelines, folks. They may differ for you, but hopefully it gives you a good starting point. Now for the last few things, hardware accelerated GPU scheduling, I actually have that turned off now. The only reason is because I use seven different VR headsets, the most of which do not like it. 
The Riva G2 actually does, perhaps if you've got a 30 series card, I do think still that the uh, sort of GPU scheduling feature uh, definitely works better with 30 series cards, but for 20 and 10 series cards, I would recommend leaving it off, as well as game mode, definitely leave that off as well. A few other tips is if you do run your GeForce uh, sort of uh, experience app in the taskbar, that robs you of about five frames per second. Make sure that's disabled. I always exit it before starting the sim. And another thing that I don't mention is the order that I start everything up. I always, always switch on my Reverb G2 first, then the sim. That's very important. Otherwise, if you get your flight all loaded up, you know, unfortunately, this sim is still in a point where it does get freaked out by USB ports and you know new devices. So make sure that everything, in, actually including your yoke and your throttle quadrants, everything's on, then load the sim up first. And once you know, you're, you've loaded your flight, do all that in 2D mode. Once you're in the aircraft, on the ramp, or wherever you are, then switch to VR. I hope guys that's been of some help. I've tried to make this as clear but as quick as possible because to be honest, I don't really enjoy tweaking that much and I'm pretty sure you don't either. You just want to fly and enjoy the sim because this is escapism for us all, especially with current events. So I'd recommend that you do a set and forget scenario. Try London City with overcast cloud. If you can get a decent level of performance there, you'll be fine anywhere in the world. Now, if I've missed anything, which I'm sure I have, please let me know in the comments. And you know, anything else that works for you, let me know in the comments and I'll add a separate section and I'll pin it to the comments if there's anything worth mentioning. So as I say, thank you so much to all of my dear subscribers, my Discord group, which by the way, I'll have links for in the description below. If you do wish to donate or support the channel in any way, even just clicking that subscribe button, I would truly, truly appreciate it. It really does help, especially when I've got a full-time job and I'm just doing this as a bit of a hobby. Take care, folks, and I'll see you again very soon. Bye-bye for now.